Hey YouTube, it's Matches 860. Smoking the Friday Savinelli with some haunted bookshop. Wanted to tell the story about the Amistad and how uh, Farmington played a part in it. A couple of years back, the day came for me to do it, and uh, I was totally burned out from work and life in general. In fact, I think I titled the uh, video, Burned Out. So I'm gonna tell it today. The Amistad story starts in uh, 1839. And the Amistad was a two-masted schooner, schooner that used to uh, hop around the Caribbean, mainly around Cuba, delivering slaves wherever they were needed. Typically to uh, work on sugarcane plantations and whatnot. So they had a uh, cargo of 40 some odd slaves on the Amistad that they were moving from one point to another. And they were fairly recent, uh, fairly recently taken slaves from Africa. The Amistad wasn't really set up for uh, transporting slaves like some of the other ships. <clears throat> so typically they had half of them in the lower hold and half of them up on deck. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> at some point one of the slaves below deck was able to free himself. And, uh, freed a few of the others, and uh, there was a bunch of machetes and knives that were stored below deck, presumab presumably for when they were going to be cutting down sugarcane. These slaves took all these things up on deck. There was only a crew of five, and they killed all but two took over the ship and they told the remaining two crew members to get them back to Africa. So the crew uh, did some fancy maneuvering and actually headed the Amistad in the direction of the east coast of the United States worked their way up the coast and off the coast of Long Island a US naval ship intercepted them found out there had been a mutiny on board people were killed they ordered the Amistad to sail into New London Connecticut from there they went on to New Haven where all the slaves were uh, held and were going to be tried for mutiny and murder. Well, this uh, gained international attention. All the newspapers were carrying it. Everybody was interested in the story. In fact, they say it's 
probably the first civil, civil rights case in the United States. Martin Van Buren was president at the time. This really got to be a thorn in the side. He just wanted the whole problem to go away. And uh, he actually had two ships that were going to be ready, no matter what the outcome was of the court case. One was going to take the slaves back to Africa, or back to Cuba, I should say. Uh, the other, just in case, was going to take them all to Canada. So the case uh, went on and the court ruled that because the Amistad was a Spanish ship and all this happened in Spanish waters, they really couldn't try the case and they declared the slaves free. Van Buren appealed the case. It went to the Supreme Court. Long story short, the Supreme Court upheld the lower court's finding. The uh, slaves were set free, but there was no way to get them back to Africa. The government had no money. So the people here in Farmington agreed to take the uh, slaves, house them, feed them, educate them, until the funds could be raised. And there were abolitionist groups around the country that were interested in donating money to, to help them get back. But it took time. And uh, so meanwhile, you had all these families in Farmington taking in these uh, refugees. And unfortunately, uh, as the money was coming in somewhat slowly, one of the uh, Amistad slaves got discouraged and it's believed that he commits suicide by walking into a uh, local body of water and drowning himself. But eventually all the money was raised and uh, thankfully the the refugees were sent back to their homeland of Africa. I'll include a couple of clips at the end of this uh, from Riverside Cemetery where Fune, who's the uh, slave who commits suicide, is uh, interred. And with that, I will thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.